With her habit, her whistle, she's the sergeant of this morning drill, in many ways the old-fashioned parochial school principal who can strike terror in encounters like this. Are you aware that she tried to cheat? Encounters the student will carry well into adulthood. So now, say to me, yes, sister, I'm very sorry, I did cheat. Yes, sister, I'm very sorry, I did cheat. You did cheat, right. Look at the tears. Are you sorry? Okay, and it shouldn't happen again, all right? Okay, once the tears come, you know that the con contrition is there, you know? And so you think she's cured, basically? Right. She won't do it again. None of them ever do it a second time when they're caught. Sister Cyril Mooney has transformed the lives of thousands of children in this school and across the city of Kolkata. She grew up in Ireland, where she joined the Loretto Order and went to India in 1956. She got a PhD in zoology and began teaching in the elite English language Loretto schools begun during colonial days. But she found the quiet, comfortable life discomforting. I was appalled by the poverty almost outside our gate. I kept on saying to myself, what are we doing in our great big English medium schools? We are educating an elite for the country, very much as you had Victorian society way back at the end of the 19th century. It was the same thing in England, same thing in Ireland. You had a peasant class that never went to school. They were there to serve. And you had the well-off people who, to whom they served. So when she took over the school in 1979, she cut in half the number of traditional fee-paying students, foregoing revenues for things one might find in elite schools, like a swimming pool. The uniform hasn't changed, but today, 50% of these students, most from the slums, attend for free. In 1983, Sister Cyril reached beyond the slums to an even lower rung of poverty, street children. Their families live on the sidewalks, rural migrants who must leave their children to fend for themselves as they look for work as laborers. For these kids, the Loretto doors are always open to come in for a meal or a bath. They're never forced to stay. The children must decide on their own if it's better here than on the street, where many have learned to survive. I went over to meet someone off the station, and this little one ran up to me with a cup of tea. She told me, I make my living by picking people's pockets, but I only pick what I need. Now, what do you do with a child like that? What? Eight years of age? I mean, unless we can give something better, why should we take away their survival skills? Survival skills or not, street children are vulnerable to being trafficked into the sex trade. So the Loreto Day School has become a night shelter called the Rainbow Program, where about 250 girls study, play, eat, and sleep. The school's roof terrace has been converted into a dormitory. Good morning, sister. Good morning, teachers. The next morning, the children of judges and doctors mingle with those of rag pickers, their lives intertwined on purpose. Every so-called regular student is required to spend at least two hours a week tutoring a rainbow child. Not only have social barriers fallen, Sister Cyril says, but the students have become advocates for change. They volunteer to teach in rural areas, and they've tackled the pervasive use of domestic child labor in middle-class homes. It's against the law to employ a child below the age of 18, but many of these children are passed off as relations up from the village. So nobody can catch the employers. But our children who live next door to them and are in the same social standing, parents and as the employers of these, they go and they fight with the employers and they get out these children to come and play and they identify them. Now they brought them in for a camp, a medical camp. On this day, several busloads of young domestics were brought in for routine health checkups. I see children here who look like they're not even 10 years old, sister. Oh, yeah, this one. Kiss me, kiss me, Sam. Sam, she's only seven years old. Seven years old and on call 24-7 to gather water, wash utensils, to wipe floors. A few lucky ones, like Saloni Cartoon, are rescued early enough so they have fewer learning handicaps. Saloni is a third grader, brought here four years ago by a Loretto alumna who noticed she was being abused by her employers. One day I was wiping and they was not in the home. She took me here. 
you from the hand? Yes. What were you wiping? The wall? The floor. The floor? Yes. So you were, wipe, you were wiping the floor? Yes. And this, this girl came and got you? Yes. She brought me here. What would you like to be when you grow up? Air hostess. Air hostess. What do they do? For helping others. Helping others, whether on an airplane or on the streets, is a common refrain. Teresa Shaw, an 11th grader, was brought here when she was three by her mother, who still lives under a sidewalk tarp. She plans to go to college, then work, and says she'll share her wages with Loretto and with her family. After my uh, studies, I'll find a job. Then I'll uh, earn something. And first earning, I, have, I want to give it to sister because this is the place where everything is for us. So then I'll see my look after my parents also. And I, I'll see that I'll look after the rainbows also. Okay, you've got big ambitions. Yes. Our idea is to push them as far as they can go academically. And then if they can't go any further, divert them into one of the vocational trainings and give them a training whereby they can start to work. Now we have big numbers of them are already gone out. My hope is that every child who comes out will have a better future. And I think the next generation will have a very good future. You've broken the cycle of poverty. Yeah, we've broken that cycle. But how to break the cycle of endless need in a city of 15 million and growing? Sister Cyril's approach can be found in classes that train so-called barefoot teachers. Most are women with some formal education, nominated by their communities to come here for a six-week course. They come from rural areas or Calcutta's burgeoning slums, where they return to teach. This community near Calcutta's Eastern Bypass Road is sandwiched between railroad tracks and a lake, now being filled to make way for a metro station. It's populated mostly by rural migrants, desperately seeking work in a city that long ago ran out of room. But this slum now has a school. Teacher Jarna Naskar, trained at Loreto, says it was a top priority for parents here. I've seen these children roaming around here. They were in such bad conditions, dirty conditions. Now they're here learning some songs, some classroom exercises. Also, they're learning about health and hygiene. Jarna Naskar is one of 7,000 barefoot teachers trained by Sister Cyril, achievement that has not gone unnoticed. Sister M. Cyril Muni. In 2007, India's government recognized her with one of the country's highest civilian honors, rarely bestowed on foreigners. I ask myself, what, what are you here for? Are you here to produce agents of human change among your children? Are you here to change the mental set of people? So even if you do it with a small number, it spreads. After all, Mahatma Gandhi was only one man. He managed to get the might of the British Empire out of India, which, which uh, is, is something quite fantastic. I mean, we can do it if all of us will work together. It all began in this school, but today some 350,000 children across the city and in surrounding rural areas are off the streets and sitting in some form of classroom. For Religion and Ethics News Weekly, this is Fred Sam Lazaro in Kolkata, India.